Today we have quite a gorgeous looking infinite series and the solution development is quite elegant and the result is satisfying as well. So without further delay, we're just going to call our infinite series S and as you might have expected, I'm going to invoke Euler's wonderful formula, which states that if we have e to the i x where x is some real number, then this equals the cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. So this means that our numerator, that is the cosine of 2 and x, this is equal to the real part of e to the 2 i and x. So this means that we can write our sum s as the sum, the real part that is, of the sum over the positive integers n of e to the 2 i n x divided by n. And of course, we can modify the way we've written our numerator here as e to the 2 i x to the n. Now, why exactly is the structure useful? Well, the reason is the complex logarithm of the reciprocal of 1 minus e to the i phi has a really nice infinite series expansion. It's equal to the sum over the positive integers n of e to the i phi to the n divided by n. So using the properties of the logarithm, if we reciprocate the argument, then we introduce this extra negative sign. So here's the negative sign that we can write on the right hand side equally as well. And all we have to do is replace phi by 2x. So this implies that the sum we want to evaluate is actually the real part of the complex logarithm of 1 minus e to the 2ix. So how exactly do we separate the complex logarithm into real and imaginary parts? Well, that's easy. All we have to do is invoke its definition. So the complex logarithm of a complex number z equals the logarithm of the modulus of z plus i times the argument of that complex number z. And it's pretty common practice even in uh, textbooks on complex analysis to write this logarithm on the right hand side as the classic N, uh, uh, ln logarithm because it's the logarithm, it's the natural logarithm of a real number and the real number in this case is just the modulus of the complex number z. So it's pretty common to write the equation in this form and I'm just going to follow that over here. So this implies that the real part of log z equals log modulus z. So yeah, this is pretty straightforward. All we have to do now is figure out the modulus of our complex number, which in this case is 1 minus e to the 2ix. So if we have 1 minus e to the 2ix, then this can be written as 1 minus the cosine of 2x minus i times the sine of 2x. So this implies that the modulus of 1 minus e to the 2ix equals the square root of the square of the real part, which is 1 minus the cosine of 2x, plus the square of the imaginary part, which is over here sine 2x. Okay, nice. So this means that on the right hand side we have the square root of 1 plus the square of the cosine of 2x minus twice the cosine of 2x plus uh, the square of the sine, sorry about that, the square of the sine of 2x and cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 of course. So you have 1 plus this 1 which gives you 2 minus twice the cosine of 2x all in the square root form. And of course you can factor out this 2 here to write this as square root 2 times 1 minus the, the square root of 1 minus cosine 2x. And now once again we're going to take help from basic trigonometry. So invoking the double angle formulae we know that the cosine of 2x can be written as 1 minus uh, twice the square of sine x. And this implies that 1 minus the cosine of 2x equals twice the square of sine x. So this further implies that the modulus of 1 minus e to the 2ix
equals square root 2 times the square root of 2 times the square of the sine of x, which of course can be written as square root 2 times sine x, and of course this equals twice the sine of x, which was pretty straightforward. This was pretty smooth. So plugging this into our expression, and wait, I missed a negative sign up here. That was going to come and bite me when I had to write the final result. So here's the negative sign that I missed, and many of you have probably pointed that out in the comment section by now. So s equals the negative of this real part. So uh, where's that final expression I wrote? Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. So this implies that s equals uh, the negative of log 2 sine x. Okay, cool. This is a pretty nice result that the sum over the positive integers n of the cosine of 2nx divided by n actually equals the negative of the logarithm of 2 sine x. And this can be regarded as a series expansion for log 2 sine x. And we can also derive a series expansion for negative log 2 cosine x. And all we need to do is perform a phase shift from the x world to the, to the uh, pi by 2 minus x world. Because this here equals negative log uh, 2 times the sine of pi by 2 minus x and according to uh, our series expansion that I've written up there this equals the sum over n the positive integers of the cosine of 2n times pi by 2 minus x. So what does this give us? Well the 2's cancel out quite nicely for the first term and you're left with only n times pi minus 2nx, which is cool. And cosine n pi minus 2nx alternates between uh, the positive and the negative cosine of 2nx. So that means we have a factor here of negative 1 to the n. Is it n or n plus 1? No, it's n. It's definitely n. Because for the n equals 1 case, you have a negative sign. Yeah, that's about right. So we have negative 1 to the n times the cosine of 2nx divided by n. And this here equals the negative of the logarithm of 2 times the cosine of x. So yeah, a couple of really nice series expansions we have here. And whoa, that was looking pretty damn awful. And I'll just fix that towards the end. And yeah, a couple of really nice infinite series expansions for today. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm definitely going to be using these boys in evaluating some cool integrals as well. So be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.